Hi there, everybody. Welcome back to my channel. My name is Rachel, and I'm a real estate agent and advisor with Remax 360 Realty here in Pittsburgh. And today, I have a very special guest. You know, Robert Wilson from Wilson Home Mortgage. <laughs> Hey everyone, Robert Wilson again. Um, excited to be back on the show. Uh, lots of good things happening here. It's still kind of cold in Pittsburgh, but it's going to warm up. At least that's what they say. So um, same with the whole, that's what they say thing with the weather. Kind of the same news for interest rates. We are uh, <laughs> expecting me to tell you they're lower. They're a little lower, but mostly the same. Um, wish I had better news. The good news is they're not skyrocketing. So we're holding status quo, uh, quo and we're going to shoot for maybe next time you see me on here, I'll be like, woohoo, rates are down. When were you saying that they were going to go down? I did say March, and we have a few days left. Uh, <laughs> but it seems like March was a little premature. Yeah. So I'm going to now throw it out there and say I'm shooting for, I want to say June, but I'm going to go May because it's, I'm feeling pretty positive. Like, it's coming around. Yeah, I mean, when the spring market rolls around, um, I think everything is obviously just going to be more lively yeah. and historically that's kind of the way it goes I mean even if you look at the stats that I'm pulling up it's like yeah the spring and summer markets are always more hopping than the winter markets um, but yeah so today we are going to start off our video by talking about something that might be on a lot of people's minds now our discussion today is going to be more speculative only because nothing is set in stone but we're going to be talking about the NAR settlement that happened, uh, what, on Friday the 15th? It did. Yeah, so we're going to be talking a little bit about some of our thoughts on that and how it's going to impact the housing market, um, but also impact the industry that I work in, which, you know, it is real estate. Um, it's, honestly, I think it's a scary time for a lot of realtors because we don't necessarily know what to expect. Um, the way we're going to be paid commissions is likely going to change. It might not. It might not change. It may not, yeah. It might not. So if you know anything about the settlement, you know that it was ruled that we are not allowed to advertise um, buyer side commissions on the MLS. And um, what was the other thing that was going along with that? Let me interject for there because a lot of people don't know what this means. You're <laughs> okay. talking to realtors. We're talking okay. to regular people. <laughs> so normal people. Yeah. But it, the way it used to work is if I was your listing agent, obviously I'm not a realtor, but if I was, you and I would have an agreement that says, hey, normal standard agreement, you're going to pay 6% to commissions of realtors. Then your listing agent would decide how much they were keeping and how much they were giving to the buyer's agent. Does that make any sense? Not really, but that's how it worked. Yeah. So the reality is this would become a little bit more fair. Um, so when you hire your listing agent, your deal would be with what you were paying them as your agent. Then then the whole idea would be whenever a buyer comes to you with a realtor, the new deal with their buyer's fee would be part of it. So if you have a very expensive buyer's agent, cost the seller a little bit more potentially, they may not like it as much as somebody that has a more inexpensive uh, partnership. So I think it's actually gonna be uh, consumer options gonna be really well. I think it could bode well for a lot of agents out there. I think we may see a fluctuation and a loss of some of our curmudgeon agents that don't want change. <laughs> they exist with the same thing with mortgages. I think it was like 2015, we got the changing of the disclosures and some people were just so angry, they quit. Yeah. So I would imagine we'll have some people that are just so unnerved, they vanish. But good news, the people that are sticking around and embracing change, we are here to help you. We have a lot, right. we have a lot of value. Um, my thought is this. I am not certain that things are actually going to change in the sense that, yes, the MLS will not be advertising any commissions. However, I think that sellers will still continue to offer buyer commissions I agree. because it's just smart business and it's good marketing. Um, and I think that what's going to end up happening is buyer's agents are going to, you know, they're going to approach their clients and they're going to say, we are going to do everything we can to see if the seller will cover commissions. Because it's very expensive to have, you know, it can be expensive to have those things come out of your pocket. And buyers are already strapped 
to the max with closing costs, you know, the transfer tax, and they're paying for inspections, and they're paying, you know, lender fees, and all kinds of things. Um, Don't forget that down payment. The down payment, that, that, that too. But I think, <laughs> you know, buyer's agents are going to start telling clients, we're going to do everything we can to make sure that the seller pays the commission. Um, and I think that when you have the buyer's agents calling sellers, which is likely how it's going to happen, saying, hey, is the seller offering commission on this home? If the seller's agent says no, they could be losing a lot of potential buyers from that house. Now, that's not going to say that, like, oh, if you find your dream home and the seller's not paying commission, that's not going to say that you can't bid for that house. But what is going to happen is you're going to have to pay your buyer's agent out of pocket. And that could be very expensive. So what I want to ask you is, do you think that um, banks and lenders are going to start rolling those costs into the mortgages? Great question, Rachel. So we got to see how lending will respond to this. I mean, currently, you could obviously use seller's assist to cover any sort of fees anyway. Yeah. But that's really not in the spirit of seller's assist because we just tacked on extra fees. Right. right? So, We'll see what lending has. I have no idea what they're going to elect to do with that. I don't think it'll really come down to that because, um, well, in theory, we're talking about this person paying or that person paying. What I have found is I have sold a house in my life, and I am pumped when somebody comes to bring me an offer. So 0%, am I going to be like, no, nope, not paying that person. No, let's make this deal work. Yeah. Like, I, let's say easy math house, like $100,000, right? Instead of them, be, you know, being like, "Hey, it's ninety-seven thousand. I'd rather be a hundred thousand with me paying a realtor three percent. I would strongly prefer that. Get you in my house. So I think it will have deals structured that way. I don't think this is going to completely upset the industry from yeah. that. Um, also, because you're watching this channel, we are in Western Pennsylvania, Pittsburgh. Let's do it. What that means is we don't have a, we have some, but we don't have tons of million-dollar properties. So I think a lot of this law has come out for the people that are spending. $50,000 on a realtor commission. That is not Western Pennsylvania. Yeah. The people here are like, I am happy to pay my agent normal commissions here. If I sold a house, do I want to pay somebody 60 grand? Probably not. Yeah. But am I happy to pay somebody $6,000? Yes. Yeah. Like that's, that's, yeah, that's, $6,000, $8,000, like, yeah. Normal numbers, right? Yeah, but here's the thing though. Commissions have always been negotiable. I can't tell you how many times I've had it pounded into my head to explain to both buyers and sellers that Compensation is negotiable, and I that was pounded into my head in every realtor class, every ethics course I've ever taken. Like, and I have explained that to every single client I've had. Yes, commissions are negotiable. Never was there a point in time where it was like, so um, industry standard, and it has to be met this way is the six percent. Uh, so three percent each side gotta pay it. I mean, I'm sure there are agents out there that say that, and I've worked with agents that are like. Yeah, the um, seller pays commission, so uh, yeah, you don't have to worry about it. Our services are free. No, our services have never been free. That's right. Ever. So, <laughs> in my mind, yes, I'm worth that commission value because I have represented clients, and almost every single client I've represented has been so grateful that I was there by their side because they got so much for it, so much stress was lifted off their shoulders, there was a lot of hardcore negotiation and problem solving that I brought to the table. So in my mind, I, you know, whether the buyer pays it or the seller pays it, I'm worth it. I'm worth it. You and if the buyer has to pay it, we're going to do everything we can to, you know, but it, I'm worth it. You, know? I, you are worth it. And I think it'll still shake out the same way for the most part. One yeah, thing, I do too. I honestly don't see the sellers are going to be saying, I'm not paying the other side. Because here's the thing. If they use a real estate agent in the first place, hopefully they're choosing a great one. Sure. But they see the value of realtors if they're listing with a realtor in the first place. That's correct. And any seller's agent worth their salt that knows good marketing is going to say, we really should be offering buyer's side commission. Even if it's not listed on the MLS, they're going to call me. They're going to find that, that information. They're going to show the home. It's all going to be good. So, I think, yeah. I think they'll be prepared. And also, I think it gives you the um, opportunity to treat consumers a little bit more fairly, right? Because yeah, of course. we all know that there's some people that go out there and buy the first house they see. Yeah. Should they pay the same fee as the person that sees 37 houses with it, Rachel? Probably right. not. Yeah. So there's a little bit more of like, hey, I tell you what, if I show you five houses or less, we're going to pay X. If I show you north of 50 homes, your fee is now Y. 
and it just becomes more because there are a lot of clients that felt entitled to just run people around and have an agent show house after oh, house, yeah. you know. Like I'm gonna see all of Western PA. It's like that's not you know, it's not an option. Yeah, so, and we don't get paid a dime. And you know, I have, and I don't ever want to say that anybody was a waste of my time. There have been times where I was out there doing the most for people, and they ended up not buying, sure. and they didn't, you know, I didn't get paid a penny. So it was just, I don't think people realize how much in between there is in each transaction, you know, they're saying, oh, well, they're getting paid $2,000 per transaction, must be a great life. Well, you're not seeing all the behind the scenes stuff, you know, all the sweat and blood we pour into this business and all the times deals fall through and I don't get paid a penny. Like people don't see that. And I shared a post on Facebook the other day that said, you know, maybe we shouldn't have approached our business like this. Maybe we shouldn't have just, you know, showed things for free and, yeah. Operated on that business model because now people are shocked that our that our services are oh they're not free anymore oh my gosh well they never were free Correct. so I mean it's it's definitely a misconception um, that we work for free and it should have never been you know presented that way so I think it's just an yeah. opportunity to make it more fair <laughs> oh that's what yeah. we're getting at it's it's never been free it's not worse if anything I would venture to say it's probably looking like it's going to be better. But we're still in the yeah. very early stages of this. We don't know. Nothing's been officially signed off on. But it, the outlook I have on it is all positive. Yeah, you know? and you're, you know, we are going to be weeding out a lot of agents that are just in it for the money. They're just in it for the quick sale. They're just in it for the wheeling and dealing. Like You are going to get rid of a lot of agents this way. And I think that in itself is a really great thing. So... Yeah, and I, and I see in the past a lot of the agents have become very good at doing listings, yeah. but then but they, what they don't tell everybody is that they do very uh, greedy transactions where they keep a lot more of the commissions and things, and now it's just going to be more transparent of like, well, what am I paying you, listing agent, and then we'll figure out what we're paying a buyer's agent later, so there's no way to blend it and be like, well, this, you know, it's just going to be, I think, just more forthright, and overall, a big win for the consumer, and I think it's going to be good for your agents that are out there hustling. Yeah, yeah, and like, you know, agents that are like, they pick and choose what listings they send due to the commission listed. Well, that's, that's no more. Happen. That's, yeah. that's, that's that no more. And yeah. I've never operated that way. You know, if my client wants to see a house that could be their dream home and the sellers, the sellers are only offering, you know, 2%, I still show them the house. And if that's what the house they want, then that's what I'm getting. You know what I'm saying? So all that kind of stuff is going to be nipped in the bud. But yeah. That's we'll, see, we'll see how, there's going to be more development, so I'm sure we'll talk more about this in the future, because we just, like, this is all speculation, we just really don't know how it's going to shake out, we don't know what the contracts are going to be looking like, you know, what changes are going to be made, um, what system we're all going to come up with, but we're just going to have to see, so you're going to have to just keep tuning into my channel to find out. Listen in for updates, we'll be here. <laughs> we'll be here, but in the meantime, we're going to be doing market updates now. Let's see what happened, Rachel. So Tell let's us. see what's going on. What's new? So I pulled up some stats, and I'm just going to be going through the things that I pulled up. Um, we are not necessarily seeing a ton of change from the last time we spoke, to be honest with you. However, one thing I want to note is I believe the market is trending back towards the way it was in 2019. We're not quite there yet. What we saw was, you know, more listings that were kind of sitting on market a little bit longer, um, just more listings in general. We are seeing more inventory now than we saw in the last two years. That's a trend that I am seeing. We're seeing five months of inventory um, here in January of 2024. Back in January of 2023, we were seeing um, 4.7, and then 2022 was uh 3.2. So I think we're seeing incremental growth back to months of inventory that we saw in 2019, which was 6.4. So we're kind of slowly creeping towards that. And I, from what I can see so far, it's going up. Now, we don't have the information for March yet, and we don't have the information for the rest of the year. But that's the trend I'm seeing. Um, and that doesn't necessarily surprise me because I think that... Sellers are still wanting to sell, um, I, but I think it has become maybe a little bit harder to buy or a little bit, people are getting a little bit, eh, they're not 
touching it as much because of the economy, yep. the way it is. I think things are really expensive. And so people are really weighing their options about buying a house, which is totally understandable. And I think a lot of the, I think, and I think with the economy, by the yeah, way, yeah, yeah. is there's a lot of clients that don't realize what cool programs are available right now. Yeah. But a lot of banks may not offer it or be educated on it. But there is the ability to buy. We yeah. just need to get there. The yeah, with the, you know, the 1%. Correct. We have one percent. It's three percent down, but you get two percent for free. Yeah. You know. So we're still offering those programs. Yeah. So you know, reach out to me, and I'll get you in touch with Robert if you're interested in that. Um. So one other thing that I am seeing here is um, original prices versus sale prices in median. Um, January of 2024, the original listing price median was um uh, around two hundred thirty-nine thousand dollars. Um. And in 2024, it's 199. Mm -hmm. So you're seeing that. Um, so you're seeing um, the. Average home price. Is yeah. Lower. So they're so what's actually being listed versus what's um, what they're selling for is about what forty thousand dollars lower. Yeah. Right. Um, in February, it was um, two forty five versus two thirteen. So we're seeing. I think we're seeing sellers listing homes for what they think they could get, but in reality, it's gonna be floating around this 200,000 mark. So my feeling is that we are not, I don't think we're gonna see home prices go up anymore, but I think they're gonna be staying around this 230, 222, 10, 200s range. Sure. I think that's where we've landed. And I think for the foreseeable future, that's, I think it's going to be pretty much locked into those types of prices because you know you can look back at 2019 and you can see you know these things are pretty more attractive they're, they're they're well obviously they're, it was cheaper to buy a home back then that's oh, yeah cool. but it was that's sort of the prices the the 180 190 200 000, uh, 170 those were sort of the price the median prices that were floating around i think we had a big upset 2020 2021 2022 but I think we've sort of like locked into that um, low 200s, 220s sort of medium price range. And I think it's going to stay there for the foreseeable future. I think the days of like offering, um, you know, 10% over list prices. I think it's gone. Yeah, I think, we've, over, I think yeah. we've stabilized for sure in the market. Yeah, which is good news for buyers. Um, I'm not saying that there's never going to be another bidding war ever again. That's just not true. There have been bidding wars even in 2019 during the summer months. But it's not going to be as intense as it was back in the COVID days. So um, I think that is, I think that's good news for buyers. Yeah, I think it's good news. I think it's honestly decent for sellers too. Because sellers, I'd rather know roughly what my house is going to sell for than be like somewhere between zero and all numbers. Like you know, like, <laughs> yeah, nobody really knows. Um, and you know, perhaps it's a bit of a disappointment that um, prices have gone down since 2021, 22, just a little bit, Good. but you have to, you know, you have to factor in the interest rate for that. Of course, people were buying more house for a lower interest rate, like, uh, yeah, you know, Yeah, so, it's way lower, of course. So this is sort of, I don't foresee the, uh, the price of the homes going down at all, but I think they've stabilized in that, you know, a low 200s range. Obviously, that's going to vary from area to area, and the more expensive areas, it's going to be like a higher price point, but the median sales price in Pittsburgh, we're around 220 yeah. at this point for what, a three-bedroom home? Yeah, so, two miles. Yeah. yeah. So we're looking at number of um, under contract listings for um, January 2024 and February 2024. And in January, it was 891. In February, it was 681, which is a very steep drop from February of 2023. I mean, it was kind of shocking when I looked at that statistic. I was like, oh my gosh, or the metric, whatever you want to call it. Sure. Um, we're down a third from last year. Yeah, and we're almost at like April 2020 numbers, and we all know what happened in April 2020. Um, so my, my feeling is that, yes, less people were buying homes, or perhaps there was less inventory in February, but what does this mean? We're gonna see a surge. I think that number's gonna go up astronomically once I get March's information. For some reason, it didn't populate, um, probably because the month isn't over. But as we move into the spring market, we're gonna see more inventory. But you know what? This could mean, could mean that less people are buying houses. But for some buyers, that is a good thing because that means less competition. Sure. In my opinion. So um, there's definitely positive ways to look at that number.
That's a buyer that swings it to your favor. Yeah. Eventually, so less competition means more. You're getting more bang for your buck, and you're getting the house more on your terms. That's exactly yeah, right. 100%. So, so we have an interesting spring. The spring market always gets wild here in Pittsburgh, but uh, I think this year we're going to see more inventory. And you know, I know we have a lot of buyers out there looking. Yeah. Everybody's waiting for me to give them that call that rates are down, but we're just going <laughs> to. Yeah, that too. Yeah, you know, move forward <laughs> with current rates. rates. You know, we don't want to like dangle, oh, rates are getting lowered. You know, we don't want to dangle that in front of you necessarily. But um, I have a lot of people looking for houses, and um, we're just waiting for the right one to pop on the market. So we're hoping that April, May, and June are going to be good inventory months. So, yeah, I believe that is our market update for uh, March of 2024. Um, we'll get back to you in April and hopefully have some more metrics on what's going on with the inventory. But, yeah, any closing notes, Robert? That's it. You know, it's a bit of a mystery here with the real estate buyer commissions. Um, at the earliest, that's supposed to go into effect into July. Yeah. So we still have some time to unpack this. But and Not worry about it for a couple months here. But, um, yeah, I mean, if you're trying to buy in the summer, things might change. So um, you can always have a consultation with me, and I can explain to you, you know, how I'm going to conduct my business from here on, and you won't have to worry about it from that point. So. Thanks for listening yeah. in, everybody. <laughs> Thank you all so much for tuning in to this video. Um, if you are interested in potentially having a consultation with me, you can give me a call at 412-926-0806 or email me at the email below. If you're interested in getting in contact with Robert, you can also email me or you know call me at the number below and I will get you in touch with him. And I hope I will see you all very, very soon. Bye-bye.